so when your nervous system is going to receive stimulus from your sense organs it is going to convert that stimulus into impulses and those impulses are going to be transformed into messages and are going to be sent to the effectors that are your muscles and your glands which are going to act accordingly so this very very coordinated nervous system is composed is mainly made up of nervous tissue and this nervous tissue has three main components one is the neuron other we have the nerve fibers and thirdly we have neuroglia right one the first component that is the neuron it is a nerve cell right this neuron is the basic the main unit of nervous system neuron is the main unit of nervous system now it has three main parts we have cytone which is the cell body we have dendrites these are the branches which arise from cytone right then we have exon exon is the long process that arises from cytone again right so when you look at this diagram this is the cell body these are the dendrites they are going to bring impulses right to the cytone they are going to bring impulses to the cytone and this is the exon which is originating from the cytone the cell body so we have three main parts we have the cell body that is cytone we have dendrites right these projections and then we have this long process that we call as exon we have a long process that we call as exon now when you look at this neuron we can actually make out that the central this the cell body that is cytone has many organelles right you can see that it has a nucleus it has a nucleolus right and cytone is the cell body which is also known as perikaryon it is also known as perikaryon it has a simple cell membrane look at it it has a simple cell membrane and the cytoplasm of the cell body is known as neuroplasm it is known as neuroplasm and you can see that it has nucleus and nucleoplasm in it and it is all the organelles except for one organelle it does not has a centrosome so centrosome is absent in the cell body of the neuron and in the cytoplasm that we call as neuroplasm it has neurofibrils and nissl bodies it has neurofibrils and nissl bodies these nissl bodies are are the small fragments of the endoplasmic reticulum which contains ribosomes right so these nissl bodies are the small fragments of endoplasmic reticulum that contain ribosomes after cytone we can discuss these dendrites right so what are these dendrites they are one to many highly branched small projections and they going to send impulses towards cytone so impulses are going to be sent towards cytone by these dendrites right so the impulses are going to reach the cytone by these dendrites that is why we call the dendrites as efferent processes remember a comes first in the alphabetical order right so first of all impulses are going to reach the cytone that is a cell body so dendrites are also known as efferent processes then we have the exon right we have exon this exon is one very long process from cytone it can be microscopic to 1 meter in length and it terminates as highly branched filaments now it is going to terminate here and here branching occurs there are terminal branches over here right so exon ends up in the form of terminal branches and it carries impulses from the cytone to what from the cytone to the next neuron right so this is also known as efferent processes it is also known as efferent processes why because just remember that the dendrites they are going to carry impulses towards cytone and these exon it's it's the branches they are going these exon which terminate into highly branch filaments they are going to carry impulses from the cytone right so they are the efferent processes starting from e so you can just remember that a as it comes first then e comes after a right so uh, this is one way you can remember this how these impulses are carried from the dendrite to the cytone and cytone to the exon right 
so uh, it the axon is also known as neuraxis it is also known as neuraxis right so this is about the neuron the basic unit of your nervous tissue so you can just see axon it uh, the impulse is generated and this is the conducting region right so this is how the impulse is carried forward right and here the axon terminates into many branched filaments right now what happens here when the axon terminates here the dendrites of the next nerve cell of the next neuron they are present but there is no physical contact they, there is no physical contact there is always some gap and that that uh, presence of next neuron with some small gap that small gap is known as synaptic cleft it is known as synaptic cleft and you can also call it as synapse right so when there is the ending of the axon by this branch filaments there is the presence of the linkage of one more neuron what will be there there will be this dendrites but these dendrites are not physically in in contact in touch with these filaments right but there is some gap that gap is known as synaptic cleft it is known as synaptic cleft right now we we'll talk about neurons there are three types of neurons we have three types of neurons first of all we have sensory neurons then we have motor neurons and then we have associated neurons sensory neurons are the neurons which bring impulses from the sensory organs to the brain sensory neurons are the neurons which bring nerve impulses from sensory organs to the brain so you can also call it as efferent neurons because first of all what is going to happen stimulus is going to be perceived by the sense organs so first of all stimulus will be generated by the sense organs and in the form of impulse it is going to be sent to the brain by sensory neurons which we also call as efferent neurons remember a comes first right then we have motor neurons these neurons are going to send the in the messages from the brain to the to the effectors what are the effectors the muscles and the glands which are going to act accordingly right so they are also known as efferent neurons starting from e efferent neurons right then the associated neurons they form a connection between the sensory and the motor neuron they they actually are also known as relay neurons they are also known as relay neurons they form a link between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron so these are the three types of neurons sensory motor and relay neurons and sensory are also known as efferent neurons motor neurons are also known as efferent neurons and relay neurons are also known as associated neurons right next important part of a nervous tissue are the nerve fibers they are the nerve fibers so nerve fibers are actually the axon which is which is covered with one or more sheaths the axon which is covered with one or more sheath so depending upon the number of sheaths nerve fibers are actually divided into two categories we have medullated or myelinated nerve fibers and we have non medullated or non myelinated nerve fibers so when you look at the diagrams you will see that the medullary nerve fibers they have what they have they have two sheaths the inner sheath is medullary or myelin and the outer sheath is neurilemma right so you will see that the inner sheath is known as myelin sheath and the outer sheath is known as neurilemma so medullated nerve fiber it actually has two sheaths then we have non medullated or non myelinated nerve fiber it has one sheath that we call as neurilemma it has only one outer sheath that is neurilemma so myelin sheath is absent in this case myelin sheath is absent in this case now in case of the medullary nerve fiber you will see that it is not the sheath is not continuous there are many constrictions over here and these constrictions are known as node of ranvier so it is not just continuous it has constrictions you can look at these constrictions and these constrictions are known as node of 
Ranvier, right? Then the next component of the nervous tissue is the neuroglia. It is the neuroglia. They are the packaging cells of nervous tissue present in between the neurons. So, in between the neurons, we have the packaging cells that we call as neuroglia, that we call as neuroglia. So, we have discussed the three components of nervous tissue, the neuron which is the which is a very important unit of nervous system. Then we have discussed nerve fibers, we have two types of nerve fibers. Nerve fibers are what? They are the axons which have one or more sheets. Then we have neuroglia, these are the packaging cells that are present in between the neurons. Then what are nerves? Nerves are you know the collection of the nerve fibers which are covered by some sheath again right. So what are nerves? Nerves are the collection of these nerve fibers which are covered by some connecting sheath and they arise from the brain and the spinal cord and they connect to your all body parts. So these this is what do we call as nerves actually right you must have heard about this word nerves. So what are these nerves? They are the collection of nerve fibers covered by some sheath and they arise from brain and the spinal cord and they connect you know many body parts. So I hope that nervous tissue which is composed of neuron which is composed of nerve fibers and neuroglia it is now clear to you.